Chapter 13, Where Mo Got Himself Into Something Big Mo was puzzled after his talk with Hilarious. The girl he was talking to the fast two weeks was a fake? Did she really fooled him the whole time? And why? Mo started to think if he told her something that could be bad for him or the guild. Was it even his fault the guild was attacked? On the way back to his room, Mo met Gang Golf from Team Green. What did you say to the guild master? The golem asked Mo. Mo thought what he could say. Should he mention Yinping? We may have still an intruder inside the HQ. If you or the twins see someone suspicious Mo said to Gandalf, but then saw Yinping standing near Mo's team room, seemingly waiting for him. Is something wrong? Gengolf asked when Mo suddenly stopped talking and looked past him. Mo looked at Gandalf again and hinted at Yinping with his fake head. Are you sure you didn't already saw someone suspicious? Someone who shouldn't be here? Gengolf looked at Mo, turned around, and turned back at Mo. It was a long night. Gengolf said and petted Mo's fake head. Don't worry. We make sure the guild will stay safe. Gengolf then walked past Mo down the dark corridor. Mo looked at Gengolf as Mo walked away and then back at Yinping, still standing there. Are you kidding me? He though. Mo walked towards the little mine Fu, his claws ready, his eyes glowing and his mind prepared for battle. Yinping turned towards Mo she tried to welcome him but noticed he didn't came as a friend. Mo pointed his right claw at her, his eyes still glowing. Who? Are you? He asked her angry. I'm Yinping. You know me. She answered worried. What did you told Hilarious in his room? I know you can't be Yinping. Yinping is dead for three years. How dare you mimicking her? Mo said and grabbed one of her arms. How dare you fool me? I'll drag you to the guild master's room right here and now. I know what is going on. She replied. Please. Let me explain the situation. Mo was still holding her arm, his eyes still glowing, waiting for her to defend herself. I am Yinping. I know they would say I wasn't alive anymore. I wanted to keep you out of trouble. You, he guild master and my brother. She told him. Why? Mo asked. Touch my chest. She said to him. What? I want you to touch my chest. She pointed at her chest with her other hand. Mo looked around to see if there was anyone seeing or even hearing them nearby. Is this legal? He asked her. Do I T? She shouted at him, making Mo flinch. Now they must have heard them for sure. Mo quickly put his other claw on her chest. Mo, what do you feel? She asked now calm again. I feel your fur and your body heat. I already noticed you are colder than other Pokémon your type," he replied. What else do you feel? she asked. I don't know what you mean, Mo said. My heart. Do you feel my heart beat? How fast is it beating? she finally said. Mo concentrated to feel it. He pushed harder into her chest, pushing and various other places around her chest where it could be. There was nothing. I can't feel anything, Mo said to her in surprise. It stopped three years ago. One night I fell asleep and when I woke up, everyone was sad. Yinping explained. Are you a ghost? Mo asked her and let her arm go. Now he wasn't surprised anymore. As a ghost type himself coming from a ghost family he already knew ghosts existed. His father sometimes told him about the ghosts of passed away Pokémon he met. Yinping looked to the ground. I'm not sure myself. I wondered if you could tell me. She answered. Am I dead? Am I still alive? When I woke up I felt better, but noticed it was night and no one was able to see or hear me. I'm still able to move objects, but no other Pokémon can hear or see me. No matter how loud I am and I don't need food or water. I'm only there during the night time and vanish when the sun rises. I also can't leave the walls of the guild for some reason. For Mo, this explained a lot of things and gave him new questions. 
when no one was able to see or hear you, why can I? And when you can move objects, why didn't you made yourself noticeable by I don't know, throwing books at the members for example? I don't want to scare everyone. Yinping started to explain. Especially my brother. He always seems calm and disciplined, but deep down he's always sad. I'm afraid what he would do if he knew I couldn't have my eternal rest. That's also why I asked you to keep quiet about me. I don't want thing to get worse. And me? Mo asked again. I don't know either. That's why I told you you're special. If it's because you are a ghost type or something else. I tried to contact every single member of this guild, including your friends. In three years you are the first and only one, she explained. I also started to believe I'm here because of you for some reason. And why didn't you told me sooner? Mo asked. I didn't know how you would react, she answered. I actually believed for the past days they held you against your will in a secret chamber somewhere around here, Mo told her. I really thought about calling the police. Yinping face got red of embarrassment. I'm sorry. Mo cited. I heard some ghosts can't rest, because there is still something that is holding them back. Is there something I can do? So you can move on? Mo asked her. Yinping shook her head. I can't think of something. And to be fair, I already embraced my existence like this. I can't feel pain. I'm sorry. He said and entered his team room to go back to sleep without looking back to Yinping. You know, I'm always here if you need me, Yinping said before leaving herself. I always will be. In the team room, Erin and Charlotte were already fast asleep again. Mo lay down between the two of them. Tonight Mo experienced and learned a lot. More than he wanted to. He knew something big was going to happen. And he was deep in the plot. He asked himself if joining the guild was still a good idea. Probably not. Not long after at the morning briefing, the average moral of the guild members was low. Not only Mo but everyone was still sleepy. The time before Hilarious arrived, Mo thought he could rest his eyes for a moment or two. Maybe it would help. Finally, Hilarious, all phones and Heidi arrived as well. They as didn't have enough sleep, too. Mo never saw the guild master in a worse shape than this. Hilarious stepped forward. I have decided to skip the normal morning briefing and tell you all what we're going to do against the forces of evil. Like mentioned yesterday, we have four different locations where the key could be hidden. We will send out four adventure teams to these four locations. Team Green and Team Orange are excluded from these missions. And no buts. But, Hilarious too, tried to say, but was abruptly interrupted by this father. What did I just say? Publius is not in the shape to go out adventuring in the next few days and no. No one of us will join you too. Mo now just noticed Publius was absent from the briefing. Hilarious turned to the other teams. Team Red, Blue, Yellow and Purple. I will send you out to search for the key. The forces of evil will definitely look for it as well. I believe you all will encounter members who will try to stop you. You all need to prepare for the worst. I know, your conditions are not the best. But today I want you to give more than 100%. It's not only for the guild now. We now fight for our world. Hilarious paused for a moment. For the safety of the missions I will give each group their location in secret. No other na has to know where you are heading to and the overall location stay a secret to anybody else. I already contacted the Air Continent Police. Until the case with the Origin Stone is solved. There will be no further adventure, rescuing or other missions. Our priority is to find the stone and keeping our HQ safe from more attacks during this time. He turned to Team Red. Team Red. Come with me to my room. I will tell you your location there. And so the briefing was over. Team Red followed Hilarious. Team Orange followed all phones and Heidi.
and Team Yellow headed back to their team room, leaving Team Purple and Team Blue alone in the entrance hall. I'm surprised they gave you one of those mission, Ziggy said as he walked towards Mo, having his arms crossed. To be fair, I'm just surprised as you are, Mo answered calmly. Maybe more. You think you're up for this kind of mission? Naya asked Team Purple. You think you're up to this? Mo asked back. You ran away last night, while I was fighting the guy who had you on his hit list. Ziggy said to Mo while looking directly into his eyes and poking his fake head. Ran away with your tail between your legs like a little girl's. That moment, Naya gave Ziggy a kick at the side. I single-handedly defeated one of the leaders last night and got her locked up. Mo defended himself. Didn't you said you throw a bookshelf on her? Aaron interrupted the argument. I want to see you throw a bookshelf. Mo beefed at his friend. Well, maybe we can take over your mission, after you failed. Ziggy said and started to rub one of Mo's ears. Let's just hope we are the one who finds the key. Just as Mo's eyes started to glow, Aaron grabbed him with his ribbons. Come. We need to prepare for our mission. Aaron said and dragged him back to the room, followed by Charlotte. Mo pointed at Ziggy with his eyes still glowing. I hope you perish. I hope you all perish. Team Blue just laughed.